Digvijaya Singh born the 28th of February 1947 is an Indian politician and a member of parliament in the Rajya Sabha. He is also currently a general secretary of the Indian National Congress Party's All India Congress Committee. Previously, he had served as the 14th Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh, a central Indian state, for two terms from 1993 to 2003. Prior to that he was a minister in Chief Minister Arjun Singh's cabinet between 1980–84. Personal life Singh was born in Indore in the erstwhile princely state of Holkar now a part of Madhya Pradesh of British India, on 28 February 1947. His father, Balbhadra Singh, was the Raja of Raghagar under Gwalior State, presently known as Guna District of Madhya Pradesh, and a member of the Legislative Assembly MLA as independent candidate for the Raghagar Vidhan Sabha constituency following the 1951 elections. He was educated at the Daly College, Indore and the Sri Govindram Sexaria Institute of Technology and Science SGSITS Indore, where he completed his BE in Mechanical Engineering. Since 1969, he was married to Asha Singh, who died in 2013, and with whom he has four daughters and a son. In April 2014, he confirmed that he was in a relationship with a Raja Sabha TV anchor Amrita Rai. They married in late August 2015. He is a Hindu. Topic: Narmada Yatra. The sacred Narmada River, the lifeline of central India, is worshipped as Narmada Maya, mother, or Ma Rua, derived from Rev, meaning leaping one. One of the five holy rivers of India, it is the only one which has the tradition of being circumambulated from source to sea and back on a pilgrimage or yatra. Being the longest west-flowing river, the Narmada Parikrama is a formidable spiritual exercise and challenge—an incredible journey of about 3,300 km. Digvijaya Singh a devout Hindu along with his wife started the Narmada Parikrama on 30 September 2017, from Barman Ghat, on banks of River Narmada after taking the blessing of his spiritual guru Shankaracharya Swami Swaropanan Saraswati Ji. The journey took them from Barman Ghat, on River Narmada southern banks, all the way to its mouth at Baruch in Gujarat. At Baruch, Mithi Tale is the point where the Narmada joins the Arabian Sea. Here they took a motorboat from the southern to the northern end and begin the return journey along its northern bank. On April 9, 2018 they completed the Narmada Parikrama at Barman Ghat having covered 3,300 km by foot in 192 day. <laughs> Political career Topic MLA and MP, nineteen seventy seven to nineteen ninety three. Singh was president of the Raghagar Nagar Palika, a municipal committee, between nineteen sixty nine and nineteen seventy one. An offer in nineteen seventy from Vijayarajay Sindhya for him to join the Jana Sangh was not taken up, and he subsequently joined the Congress Party. He became a member of the Legislative Assembly MLA as the party's representative for the Raghagar Vidhan Sabha constituency of the Madhya Pradesh Legislative Assembly in the 1977 elections. This was the same constituency that his father had won in 1951 as member of the Legislative Assembly MLA as independent candidate for the Raghagar Vidhan Sabha constituency following the 1951 elections. Digvijaya was later re-elected from the Raghagar constituency and became a Minister of State and later a Cabinet Minister in the Madhya Pradesh state government led by Arjun Singh, whom he has called his mentor. Between 1980–84, he was President of the Madhya Pradesh Congress Committee between 1985 and 1988, having been nominated by Rajiv Gandhi, and was re-elected in 1992. He had been elected as a member of the 8th Lok Sabha, the lower house of the Parliament of India, in the Indian general election of 1984, representing the Rajgarh Lok Sabha constituency. He was the first Congress politician to win the constituency, which had been created in 1977. Having won that contest by 150,000 votes, he lost the seat to Pralal Kondalwal of the Bharatiya Janata Party by 57,000 votes in the 1989 general election. 
He regained it in 1991, becoming a member of the 10th Lok Sabha. Topic: <laughs> Chief Minister 1993 to 2003. In 1993, he resigned from the Lok Sabha because he had been appointed Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh. His brother, Lakshman Singh, had been elected in 1993 as a Congress MLA in Madhya Pradesh from the same Raghagar Assembly constituency that Digivijaya had previously held. Lakshman resigned from the seat in favour of Digvijaya, who needed to be elected to the Madhya Pradesh Legislative Assembly in order to fulfil his role as Chief Minister. However, the scheme failed when a petition was filed that challenged the validity of Lakshman's 1993 election. Digvijaya instead won the by-election from Shishora constituency, which was vacated by the former MLA Shivnarayan Meena that time for the purpose. The Hindi belt, of which Madhya Pradesh is a part, has a significant number of economically and socially disadvantaged Dalit and tribal communities. Through his policies, which have evoked both strong support and criticism among academics, Singh targeted the prospects of those people during his first term in office. These efforts attempted to arrest the declining support for the INC by those communities, who since the 1960s had increasingly been favoring the Bahujan Samaj Party BSP, the Jana Sang and its political successor, the BJP. He followed the example set by Arjun Singh in taking this approach, which was not adopted in others areas of the belt such as Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. Suda Pai says, He was driven by both the political imperative to sustain the base of the party among these social groups and a commitment to improve their socio-economic position. The Dalit agenda that resulted from the Bhopal Conference in 2002 epitomized the strategy, which by Digvijaya Singh's time was more necessary than during Arjun Singh's period in power because one outcome of the Mandal Commission had been increased Dalit desires for self-assertion. His approach to reform in what was still largely a feudal society was driven by a top-down strategy to achieve Dalit and tribal support, as opposed to the bottom-up strategy of other belt leaders such as Mayawati and Lalu Prasad Yadav, who lacked Singh's upper caste, class status and harnessed the desire for empowerment in the depressed communities through identity politics. Among the measures introduced to achieve his aim were the Education Guarantee Scheme EGS, redistribution of common grazing land Charnoy to landless Dalits and tribals, free electricity for farmers, the promotion of Panchayati Raj as a means of delegating power to villagers and a supplier diversity scheme which guaranteed that 30% of government supplies would be purchased from the disadvantaged groups. There was less emphasis than previously on methods of assistance that were focused on reservation of jobs. Returning to the Raghagar constituency for the 1998 elections, Singh was re elected and appointed by Sonia Gandhi to serve a second term as chief minister. Census data suggests that Singh's education reforms had become a particularly successful aspect of his government. Those reforms included the construction of thousands of new village schools under the EGS, and may have been significant in increasing the literacy rate in Madhya Pradesh from 45% in 1991 to 64% in 2001. The improvement among girls was particularly high, growing from 29% to 50%. In his second term as chief minister, Singh sought to extend his decentralizing, socially beneficial ideas by instituting reforms in health care that would guarantee a minimum level of care at panchayat level by financing the training of locally nominated health care professionals. This mirrored his earlier efforts in education and was known as the Health Care Guarantee Scheme. Chhattisgarh gained administrative independence from Madhya Pradesh in 2001 under the terms of the Madhya Pradesh Reorganization Act. Singh was directed by Sonia Gandhi to ensure the selection of Ajit Jogi as the chief minister for the new state and this Singh did, although Jogi had been critical of his style of politics and Singh had personally preferred not to see him installed to that office. While Singh managed to convince the majority of Congress Legislator Party members to back Ajit Jogi, the absence of Vidya Sharan Shukla and his supporters at the meeting raised questions about the exercise of seeking consensus because Shukla was the other main contender for the post. Subsequently, Singh met with Shukla in order to allay concerns. Singh won the Raghagar constituency again in 2003, but his party overall was heavily defeated by the BJP, as it also was in Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh. 
The defeat in Madhya Pradesh has been attributed in large part to deadlocks in the pursuit of development that had arisen as the Panchayati Raj and central government squabbled about the extent of their respective powers, and to frequent electrical power cuts. The latter resulted from 32% of what had been the generation capacity of Madhya Pradesh now being in the new state of Chhattisgarh. While Chhattisgarh did not need all of that capacity, much of it had historically been used in the remainder of Madhya Pradesh, which now found itself having only around 50% of the power that it required. Aditi Fadni, a political journalist and author, also notes that in 1985, the state had been producing a surplus of electricity through a process of technical and administrative efficiency that was the envy of other areas, and that then, "...the state electricity board began to be looked upon as a milch cow by successive politicians, Digvijay Singh included." Power was given away and no money was set aside for repairs and maintenance. One of Singh's last proposals while in office was to write off the electricity bills of 1.2 million people over the preceding three years, in this he was thwarted by the Election Commission of India, which ruled the proposal to be a breach of election rules. Singh had claimed that it was desirable because the farmers of the state—who needed electricity to power water pumps—had suffered three years of drought conditions. Work at national level Following his party's defeat, Singh determined that he would not contest any polls for the next decade and the Raghagar constituency was won by his cousin, Mool Singh, at the next elections in 2008. Singh shifted his attention to working for Congress from the center, becoming a general secretary of the AICC and being involved in the party's organization across several states, including Andhra Pradesh, Assam, Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. In 2012, Singh said that there was a need for younger people to be involved in state assemblies and that he had no further interest in contesting state elections. He expressed a willingness to contest the 2014 Lok Sabha elections if Congress wanted him to do so. He also said that he would like to see his son as the incumbent of the Raghagar constituency. His son, Jayvardhan, was accompanied by his father when he joined the INC in June 2013 after previous involvement in its youth section. Mool Singh, the incumbent MLA, announced then that he would not be contesting his Raghagar assembly seat in the forthcoming elections, paving the way for Jayvardhan to be elected in a form of dynastic succession that is a feature of politics in India. In January 2014, he was elected as a member of parliament to the Rajya Sabha from Madhya Pradesh. Singh has been criticised by his opposition for corruption, which he denied. In 2011, a charge sheet was submitted in court against him but the Central Bureau of Investigation CBI determined in March 2014 that there was no case to answer. In June 2015, Singh petitioned the Supreme Court, pleading for a CBI probe into the Viapam scam. He claimed to have interacted with a whistleblower who had revealed sensitive information to him. The CBI dismissed the claim in November 2017, raising the possibility that Singh could be prosecuted for fabricating evidence. Topic. Controversies Topic. 1998 multi-farmer massacre In 1998, 19-24 farmers were shot dead by Madhya Pradesh police. Singh was chief minister of the state at the time and the People's Union for Civil Liberties blamed him for arresting farmers' leaders. Topic. Batla House controversy A comment by Singh in 2011 led to disagreements within his party. He suggested that the Batla House encounter case, which led to the death of two terrorists and one police officer, was fake. The Union Home Minister, P. Chidambaram, dismissed Singh's claim and his demand for a further judicial investigation into it. Congress distanced itself and rejected his views that the encounter was stage-managed, stating that the encounter should not be politicized or raked up for political gains. Singh's stand on the Batla House encounter led to criticism from the opposition BJP. <laughs> Remarks about female MP In 2013, Singh described Meenakshi Natarajan, a female Congress MP from Mansoor, as Sao Tunch Mall. 
totally unblemished. A colloquialism the Times of India described as frequently used loosely to describe a woman as sexy. Advocates for women's rights were upset by Singh's comment and called for Congress to act against him. Singh said he meant that Natarajan was like pure gold. The Times of India commented that Tunch Mall is also a trade jargon among jewelers to describe the level of purity of the yellow metal, and added that Singh prefaced his comment about Natarajan by describing himself as a political goldsmith. Topic: <laughs> Criticism of burial of Bin Laden's body. Singh criticized the United States in 2011 for not respecting Osama bin Laden's religion when it buried him at sea, saying, "...however big a criminal one might be, his religious traditions should be respected while burying him." Congress leadership distanced itself from his views. Singh later said that his statement should not be interpreted as support for or opposition to bin Laden, adding, I had merely said that the worst of criminals should be cremated according to their faith. He is a terrorist and he deserved the treatment that he got. <laughs> Views on Hindu nationalist groups Singh has said that the right-wing extremism of the kind he said is perpetrated by the Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh RSS and Students' Islamic Movement of India represented a grave threat to national unity. He equated RSS to the Nazis stating that, "...the RSS, in the garb of its nationalist ideology, is targeting Muslims the same way Nazis targeted Jews in the 1930s." Israel had taken grave exception to this comment. He accused the RSS of being involved in a number of terrorist strikes across the country. He demanded a CBI enquiry into the murder of Sunil Joshi, an RSS activist accused of being involved in the Ajmer Darga attack, alleging that Joshi was murdered because he knew too much. 